hello and welcome back super mums in today's video i'm going to be talking to you about morning routines <music> always please make sure you are liking sharing and subscribing so we can reach more mums and help them enjoy their motherhood too so slight disclaimer before anyone gets super upset if you are still in the first probably up to 12 months of new parenthood the majority of this is not going to be for you now some of you might be it depends on how your kid is sleeping uh, but particularly if you're in like the first like up to 12 weeks of motherhood you're in a whole different season of life you're not necessarily ready for the season of life where you are adopting a self-care personal morning routine you're probably more in a survival mode but don't turn off I would still love you to watch this and get a feel for what you maybe want to do further down the line. Maybe you want to try some bits out between now and then. Maybe actually things are going really well with the sleep front because I know it's like passed all over social media that no one's kids sleeps, but actually some people's kids do and there is nothing wrong with that. You don't need to feel bad that your kid is sleeping well and someone else isn't. Don't rub it in their face, but you don't personally need to feel bad inside of you. So don't switch off if actually you feel like, yeah, I'm in the early days, I'm in the survival season, but this is still something that I feel like could be part of my life. Do you have a morning routine? Do you have a set structure for you? Now, I'm not talking about the routine necessarily of getting the kids off to school, those kind of things. It's what do you do with the you time around that? Do you have you time around that? Are you making the effort to carve out you time around that? And this again will all depend on what your goals are, what it is you're trying to achieve, personally, professionally and things at the moment, the more you're trying to do and achieve and get from life, the more effort you're gonna have to put in to sculpt this me time. For me, having a morning routine means that I have to get up at five. But I'm quite happy getting up at five because that gives me the structure and routine that I want. It's very personal what you do with your time. There are lots of books and all these kind of things that are about morning routine. One of the people I really love for morning routine bits and pieces is Amy Landino, who I've mentioned before. Um, I will link her down below and some stuff might appear here. Um, she is actually writing a book about mornings and morning routines and things like that. Um, I can't remember the title of it right now off the top of my head. I'm really sorry, Amy. Uh, but I just know it's going to be mega because she gets so excited about mornings and morning routines and things as well. So if you want more than I give you in this video, head over to her channel. There are so many different episodes that touch on different things for morning routines. But from things like hydrating you, hydrating your skin, getting your mind in the right place, getting your body in the right place, like really thinking through how you could best use your time maybe you are trying to launch your own business and actually that little bit of the morning is the only time that you've got. The quality of my work is so much better in the mornings. If I'm going to be doing something tricky, I've got to do it in the mornings. Uh, with the exception of recording video because uh, by the time I've got up and actually done all the makeup and dried my hair and washed my hair and I don't want to use the hair dryer that early to wake people up, Video first thing in the morning just doesn't happen for me, but podcasts, love recording podcasts first thing in the morning. When someone says they're in a different country and I'm like, yes, the time zone work and I can record with them at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., love it. Um, there are certain things that we find that we're actually, once we get up and get going, we even people that aren't morning people, I am naturally a nighttime person, I'm naturally an owl, I'm not a lark. But actually when I push myself to get up and get going in the mornings, the quality of my work is so much better. So for me personally, like I say, morning routine is very personal, but this is what I do. Uh, there is a slight variation at the weekends, um, but not a massive one. Uh, more so on Sunday than Saturday, uh, because we tend to try and like, we'll get up and then get both get like a tea or a lemon water and stuff and come back to bed and read a book and have a cuddle and stuff um, before we get up and carry on with life. But on the whole, this is fairly standard. Get up at five, I straight into the bathroom like before my brain can think about anything. Uh, straight into the bathroom, wash my face. I only wash my face once a day and I'll do it with water the other time. So uh, the morning one is actually my water one. I do a, a proper cleanser at night. But the morning one is just like water with, um, I actually use the cloth from my cleanser, which is the Lizelle cleanser. So it's got like the 
the cloth thingy. I like that. It feels like it's doing like a mild gentle exfoliate at the same time. So just water and that. Um, I have a toner spray, so it's like super lazy and it's like feel like energized already. A vitamin C uh, serum that again feel like energizes and wakes me up um, and then a moisturizer with SPF. So sun's not even up and I know I've got SPF on my skin. Uh, just, I, I love that. It sets a good foundation for the day. Whatever happens after that, I have SPF on. Um, annoyingly, it's only a 30. If anyone can recommend that they found, I would like a 50, but I also want a really good hydrating moisturizer. If I'm out in the sun for long, I normally have a hat on anyway, but I will factor 50 as well. But as my general day-to-day -day moisturizer, I'd like a really good hydrating, non-oily, non-greasy moisturizer that's a factor 50, and no one seems to do one yet. So please let me know in the comments down below if you found one. Uh, that would be really handy. I then potter off downstairs, and I make in bulk uh, loads of lemon juice. Couldn't remember the fruit then. <laughs> loads of lemon juice and freeze them into ice cubes. One ice cube is my morning portion. Uh, I will either put it in hot water if it's a cold day, or I'll heat it up in the microwave, like a couple of seconds in the microwave to melt the ice cube, and then whack that in a glass of cold water uh, to have my lemon water. That is my first thing to consume. At the time of recording, I'm currently doing intermittent fasting, so then that's kind of it. Uh, on a bad day, I might have a coffee, uh, not straight after, be much after, but I'll have a coffee later on at some point, um, a decaf, because I decided I don't like calf. Uh, but other than that, I then don't eat until 11.30 so that I don't have to waste time on breakfast, it's quite nice. Intermittent fasting is really great for your body, um, for losing weight, for all the things. Um, I find once I've got into it after a few days, my energy levels are so much better too. But also, mornings are often quite busy. And to not have the wasted time of making yourself breakfast and washing up after yourself, it's actually quite handy. <laughs> Even from a time-saving point of view, I would recommend intermittent fasting. Uh, I've kind of done it for years, on and off. Um, I did it, got rid of the first load of baby weight doing intermittent fasting. I then came off it because my training times were a bit psychotic and it didn't really fit with my training schedule. And it's back to fitting with my training schedule, so I'm back on it. And um, yeah, I do love it and I do feel a lot better on it. And yeah, after the first couple of days, you just don't feel hungry during that morning time, as long as you're fueling your body well the rest of the time. Anyway, I'm digressing from my morning. <laughs> Need a whole separate video on intermittent fasting. Uh, so then I will do my five minute journal, which probably takes about a minute and a half. Uh, I love the idea of journaling. I love everything good that comes about journaling. For a while, I'd set a timer for either five or 10 minutes, depending on how much time I had left, um, and just write. But I found like I was forcing myself to get words out and ended up just dwelling on negative things as opposed to moving forward. And the five minute journal got recommended to me. Um, I'd heard it somewhere before and then Amy Landino recommended it as well. I was like, that's a thing. She had a pink one. So there was this whole big palaver with the amazing Mike Vardy of the, uh, who's the productivityist, activityist, uh, I can't never get the words out, like the long words, um, who managed to get me the pink one because you can't get them in the UK and the shipping was ridiculous. So he actually got it shipped from America to himself in Canada and then from Canada sent it on to me and that was much cheaper than me going directly to America and getting it shipped to me. Uh, so I now have the pink one, which is exactly the same as the whitey gray one, but it's pink on the outside. But hey, I really wanted the pink one. I'm more likely to do it if it's pink. I, I know thyself and thyself likes pretty things. So like I have my pretty sparkly pen with it as well. I'm much more likely to do it if it's pink and it has a sparkly pen. So that's what I did. That's what I got. If you follow me on my personal Instagram, I posted a picture of my bedside cabinet with it like there quite a while ago now, but it was there. Um, scroll back through, you'll find it. Um, it's cute. Anyway, I'm digressed again. Keep digressing. Like I should do this live and then people can hear like the hearts when I digress. I get so many hearts. Uh, so yeah, do my five minute journal and then I kind of have a potter around the kitchen. Uh, depending on my mood, I'll put on music or an iPod, no, not an iPod, or a podcast on iTunes. And I will put away the washing up from last night, wash up any last minute bits. Uh, quite often I'll make my other half of hat lunch because I really like doing that for him at the moment. Don't worry, don't always do that. And in no way is he forcing me or asking me to do it. Um, it's just something I like sending them off with like a nice lunch and things. So I'll put together bits with leftovers and make up some 
other bits and pieces to go with that. Uh, and that normally gets me to about quarter to six. A couple of mornings a week, I have clients at quarter past six in the morning um, and other mornings I don't or I might be going to the gym. Uh, so quarter to six, it's time to get changed, get ready, put on whatever clothes it is that I need for the next bit, which sometimes means staying in my pajamas and just going into my office, which is fine. Um, and then, then there's some variation, uh, but it's always my daughter's up at 7.30 ish, but that last window uh, it's kind of a work or workout time. There's something very like reassuring of having that consistency in the morning. But I get other people's kids get up a lot earlier and things like that and there is variation or you get up for a sickness bug and things like that. You've got a partner that works shifts and doing different times. I am not saying that by any means that my morning routine is the be all and the end all of morning routines. I have other things that I add in there. I really like writing my goals out every morning, but at the moment that's not something I'm doing because I'm recording a lot of podcasts and I want the podcasting time instead. Um, but it will be something that I go back to and add in. Meditating, I used to meditate in the mo every morning. At the moment, not something I'm doing, but it is something I want to put back in when the season's right. I'm not in a season where I need it. And yes, meditation is a great thing. Like you massively improve and it has like a rolling improvement effect, not just an improvement of how well you meditate, but how much it affects your life is a, it's like a rolling and a growing effect thing. But it's just not, I'm not in a season where that fits in my life at the moment. And that's the thing to really consider is what fits in the season that you're in at the moment. And that might literally be knowing that you get up first thing and put the coffee machine on and you have a coffee or going you get up first thing and you have a smoothie and you make a juice or you have your lemon water or you take vitamins or you always have eggs and avocado because that is what sets you up for the nice day or that you have like chicken and brown rice every morning and that sets you up for the day breakfast doesn't need to look like breakfast you could be skipping breakfast and doing intermittent fasting like me it's getting up and having that like specific first couple of things that you know you're gonna do. So when you get out of bed, you don't really have to think. Like my brain takes a little while to come on. Like it functions better in the morning, but it is like, it's sort of been pressed and it's sort of whirring and warming up for like that first little bit. So it's nice for us to get out of bed and know, don't have to think because I just do da 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 da. There is so much information out there about the benefits of having a morning routine. There are different people that talk about the different structures and things that you could look at. The miracle morning is a very popular way to go. And I'm pretty sure he definitely talks about in the book, he has a section at the back for parents. But I feel like there might even be a miracle morning for parents whole book where it's all been tweaked to suit parents better. I would like to finish up with the fact that you shouldn't be comparing your morning routine to someone else's. You have no idea what they've been through to get their morning routine or what they're going through to have, like, have such a non-existent morning routine at the moment. Uh, maybe it's just something that's not been on their radar, but don't be comparing yourself by someone else's morning routine because that's just a crazy thing. You know what I'm like? I say it time and time again, like, it's about doing it your way and finding the personal way that suits you. But that doesn't mean you need to shut off what other people are doing. You can take examples and advice and guidance from other people. And then it's, it's sort of tailoring it to you. I love the phrase, you should be a filter, not a sponge. You don't need to soak in everything everyone says and like do stuff with it. You can just be like letting it filter through and be like, yeah, I'm going to take this bit and this bit and this bit and these little bits of things. Because not everything works for everyone. But just because my exact morning routine wouldn't work for you doesn't mean you scrap morning routines altogether. The different morning routines I've used, used for the different seasons of my life have all worked really well. Like having a morning routine has always worked. It just looks different for the different seasons of my life. I would love to hear some of the things that you include in your morning routine. So please stick those in the comments down below. I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember, being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.